Hi. You're on the Alice Reddit Stories channel. Subscribe to my channel as well as my Facebook page. There we can chat. The link is in the description of the video. Thank you. Enjoy watching. Story 1. OOP's son stole his dead mother's ring to propose to his girlfriend. To say I was mad as hell would be an understatement. I, 46M, have a son Jake, 23M and fake name. Jake was a good kid growing up. So him doing this was a complete shock to me. I have a daughter too, Amber, 16F and also fake name. When my wife passed away from COVID nearly two years ago, she already had a will in place. She was immunocompromised due to a prior condition she was diagnosed with a decade before she passed. And she made sure she had a will set just in case anything happened to her. And in said will she divided her assets between our children. And Jake got his cut as he was already 21. He used that money to put a down payment on a condo, and he also got his mother's car. But the will stated that my daughter was to get all of my wife's jewelry. That included a vintage gold ring with a diamond that had a light blue sapphire on each side of it. That ring has been passed down for generations in my wife's family. It was originally her grandmother's wedding band. Her husband was a jeweler and hand crafted the ring for her himself. And it was passed down to my wife's mother when her grandmother died, and then to my wife herself when her mother passed. And it along with the other jewelry was to all go to my daughter. When my wife passed away, my grief was intense. But I powered through it for the sake of my family. And they supported me 100%. So the betrayal from my son was just a rusty knife in the back to me. For the past eight months Jake has been dating Sarah, fake name. She has my son wrapped around her finger. And she loves jewelry as she adorns herself with it a lot. My son mentioned the family jewels my wife left his sister to Sarah one day, and Sarah really wanted to see them. So Jake went into my room when no one was home and showed them to her. He later admitted to me that he'd done this, and I was angry. But I thought that would be the end of it. I was wrong. Jake came to me a week ago and begged for that ring from his mother's family jewels so that he could propose with it. He said Amber had fallen in love with the ring when she saw it before, and he just knew it'd be the perfect ring to ask her to marry him with. He seemed completely convinced I'd be jumping for joy for him wanting to propose. But instead, I told him that I was not the one to ask as the ring belongs to Amber. And I wouldn't have him pressuring her to give it up at either. For a fair chance, I'd allow him to explain his reasons and ask her for it once. But only once. Without pressuring her. And if she refuses for any reason, that will be the end of it. Jake agreed and asked Amber for the ring right in front of me. But she told him no because she wanted to keep it in the family jewels, and has always loved that ring. To her, it's priceless. She couldn't bear to ever give it up. I told Jake that was that, and to not press the matter further. Jake left looking very unhappy about not getting the ring. But I thought he'd let it go and look into finding a similar one. But he came back another day while I was at work to talk to his sister after she got home from school. He and Amber got into a huge fight about the ring and Amber called me crying. I called Jake and told him to get out of my house and leave his sister alone. Jake yelled at me that he should have just as much right to the ring as his sister, because my wife was his mother too. But I reminded him he got a lot of his mother's money and her car. The jewelry is Amber's and only hers. He hung up on me and Amber soon texted me that he left very angry. Later right before I left work, my daughter called and told me that Jake came back. He walked and dressed in a suit, went into my room and took something. Then left without saying anything to Amber. She tried to keep him from leaving, but he shoved her out of the way. I rushed home as soon as my shift was over and checked my wife's jewelry box. The ring was gone. I immediately called Jake, but he didn't answer. So I messaged him that I'll get police involved if he doesn't return the ring. 
using it to propose won't stop me from taking it back. That finally made him talk to me, and he tried to say that I couldn't do that to him because he's my son. I said I can and will because he outright stole the ring. And he'd better bring it back right away, or I would take drastic measures. Well he phoned me right after that, and in a whisper he said that it was too late. He'd taken his girlfriend out to dinner and proposed to her with the ring. He hadn't had it for more than an hour by this point. Yet the ring was already on her finger. I said that was his problem. He stole the ring, he can bring it back. It's not his, and I will do whatever it takes to make sure it's returned. And if that means going to police and blowing the whole situation up, then so be it. I'll file a report, I'll even get a lawyer. Jake started crying and saying I couldn't do this to him. I told him tough luck. He stole from both his sister and dead mother. I would not back down until the ring was returned, Jake wouldn't stop crying and making excuses. So I told him to have the ring back by morning, or I would be moving forward with legal action. Jake is my son, but he still broke the law. And I couldn't overlook what he did. He said he'd be by in the morning to talk, and ended the call while crying even more. Well Jake did show up in the morning, and brought his girlfriend with him to try and guilt us. Turns out she not only knew he stole the ring, she wanted to keep it anyway. Because she was completely in love with the ring since she first laid eyes on it. I told her I didn't care. She could have a jeweler make a copy of it or something. But the original doesn't belong to her, it belongs to my daughter and deceased wife. Jake begged me one more time not to make her give it back. But I and my daughter stood firm. Return the ring or face police and maybe even a potential lawsuit. Jake's girlfriend pulled the ring off her finger and dropped it in my daughter's hands, called me an evil bastard, then left my house in tears. Jake started screaming at me that I may have just destroyed his relationship. I retorted him that he did this to his own relationship by stealing a ring that didn't belong to him. What kind of son steals from his own sister and dead mother? That is beyond terrible. Jake had nothing more to say to me and walked out to follow after his girlfriend. I didn't get anyone else involved in the situation. But Jake did. He tried getting support from friends and family but he got the exact opposite reaction he'd hoped for. They were all mad at him over what he'd done. I got many phone calls and message from people offering me condolences and saying they were not on Jake's side. I tried to do damage control. But now everybody knows. It's been a week now, and Jake's refused to speak to me. I've sent him detailed pictures of the ring, just in case he wanted a jeweler to replicate it. But making a copy would be very expensive unless he used fake stones. And thus far there has been no response. I don't know what the situation is with his girlfriend. If she even still is his girlfriend after what happened. But I still stand by the fact that Jake had to return the ring. I have since had all my wife's jewelry placed in a safety deposit box that only I have access to and the jewelry will remain there until my daughter is 21. And may even stay there if she wants to keep it safe that way. I know I'm in the right to have reclaimed the ring. However I don't want my son to hate me. And I don't want the family to hate him. If anyone has any advice as to how to better mediate this situation without me giving away the ring or spending a lot of money, I'm all ears. Update, well my son's girlfriend Sarah has officially broken up with him. He's devastated and blaming me. Some previously pointed out that I gave him too much credit in saying he was a good kid. He used to be. But the person he is now, I just do not recognize. Whether he was always like this deep down, or if he just fell for the wrong person and let her change him for the worse is a mystery to me. But it doesn't justify what he did. After I forced him and Sarah to return the stolen ring, she apparently spent days crying in bed, then told Jake that she didn't want a different ring no matter how much he told her he'd get her another one. She wanted my deceased wife's ring. 
and she couldn't imagine possibly having a different one for their engagement now that it had already been on her hand. Even though it was only for a few hours and stolen. The last time I met someone who cried that much about being made to return stolen property, they were four years old. I heard more than one person say they thought Sarah was being a big baby about it. The situation was no secret because Jake spilled the beans looking for support to the whole family and his slash Sarah's friends. As previous readers know, that backfired badly for them. Well after Jake's failed gambit for support, all the local drama lovers latched onto the situation like barnacles to a boat. And they kept messaging me with more information, even though I wasn't asking. So I was being kept in the loop even though Jake and Sarah weren't talking to me and why son had the pictures I sent him so that he could try and replicate the ring, and took them to a jeweler. The jeweler said he could make a similar ring based on the pictures. But he'd want to closely examine the original and take proper measurements to make an evaluation of the stones and metal in order to see what it'd take to make as close of a copy as possible. Jake waited for a while before swallowing his pride to call me again. His girlfriend was finally at least entertaining the idea of making a copy. But she wanted it to be an exact copy, down to the smallest detail, they called me a couple days after I made my original post and asked me to bring the ring to a jeweler to get a proper quote on the cost of making a duplicate. I agreed to take an extended lunch break and meet at the local jeweler. I got the ring from the safety deposit box and guarded it closely. I could see Sarah's eyes light up with greed the moment she saw it again. She reached her hand out and asked to wear it just one more time then pouted like a child when I told her no. For all I knew she'd take off running the second she had it. The jeweler looked at the ring very closely for a little while, and said it was worth more than we thought. And to copy it would cost a lot. The ring was decades old, and expertly crafted by my wife's grandfather some time in the 1940s. The jeweler singed its praises even. The diamond and sapphires were decently large for an engagement ring, and the ring itself didn't use a slim gold band, but a pretty thick and heavy one made of what was estimated to be 18 karat gold. But there was more. The stones themselves were set in platinum, and the ring had many ornate floral carvings on it. The stones alone needed to make an identical ring was more than Jake's current budget. And not including antique value, Making a copy of a ring like that with that variety of materials would cost a lot in time and labor because every part of it would have to be handcrafted. If was five times what Jake had saved. The best he could have done would be to make a down payment and then spend years in debt. Sarah enthusiastically wanted Jake to have the ring made anyway. But the cost was just too much. So the jeweler suggested they have one made that just looks the same. It didn't need to be made of the exact same materials. They could use a center stone that just looked similar to diamond, and replace the platinum with a similar metal I can't remember the name of. But it would have reduced cost by a lot. There was also a suggestion of looking for a modern ring that looks similar that's already made. Which would be far cheaper as well. In fact, the jeweler already had three rings set aside that all looked somewhat similar with a central diamond and sapphires. And all very reasonably priced, Jake was all for either idea when Sarah suddenly slapped him while calling him a cheap broke-ass wannabe. Then turned on her heel to me and called me an evil bastard again for taking the original ring back because it had already been given to her when Jake proposed, and should still be hers regardless. Then she held up her hand in the manner one does when they expect you put a ring on their finger, and outright demanded the ring back while saying it was her right to wear it, and that my daughter wouldn't need it because it'd go to waste with her. She actually said it's not like my daughter would be doing the proposing to anyone since a man could just get a different ring for her someday. Oh boy did that make me angry. And she clearly noticed because she took a couple of steps back. I looked her dead in the eye and said that my wife's family ring will never be hers. It wasn't Jake's to give away. And he knew it. 
that's why he went out of his way to steal it while I wasn't home. Because he hoped I wouldn't demand it back if he used it. But neither he nor she ever had a right to it. Then I said that it's entitled people like her that are what's wrong with the world now. She acts like whatever she wants should be handed to her. And she's lusted after my wife's ring ever since Jake first showed it to her. That whole speech was a bit long-winded with some conjecture, I know. But I just couldn't hold myself back verbally anymore. My wife used to tell me that if I wanted to insult someone, I always figured out exactly what to say. After I said all of that to Sarah's face, she aimed to slap me too. But I guess the look in my eyes was enough to make her turn away and storm out instead while while very loudly making some sort of unintelligible tantrum noises that hurt my ears. She even intentionally knocked down a counter display on her way out. Jake was glaring at me with absolute rage, but didn't say anything until I asked him why he was with this awful woman. And he just said that he loved her and followed after. To his credit, she is very beautiful. But it's really just skin deep. Sarah wouldn't talk to Jake for a while, and then a few days later told him they were through because she felt like he didn't value her enough to get her the ring she deserved, and that she couldn't imagine having a miser like me as a father-in-law. She said she felt thoroughly humiliated by me. And cried that people all think she's a gold digger now. But I don't think they are wrong. I mean, she slapped my son just for suggesting they make a cheaper version of an expensive ring he could not afford. Then threw a massive tantrum just because I wouldn't hand over the original when she demanded it. That's the behavior of a gold digger if I've ever seen any. And while it is an assumption on my part, exactly how long would Sarah have stayed with my son if someone rich came along and swept her off her feet? Would she have been inclined to still stand by him? Something tells me not so. I honestly feel like she just wanted the ring and nothing else. Right after the incident with the breakup, Jake did try to get in my house again while I wasn't home. To do what I have no idea. But if I were to speculate, he may have been after the cash in my gun safe, or thought the family jewels were still in the house. I hadn't told him at that point that I'd had them stored away in a deposit box. And I really didn't want to think my own son would break in for either of those reasons. But he stole from us once. He could do it again. Someone here suggested I replace the locks on my house, and I did. So Jake's key would no longer work. I'm looking into getting cameras put in now too. My daughter Amber called me after Jake showed up and said she was terrified while he was banging on the front door and demanding to be let in. I called his cell and he didn't pick up. But I guess it spooked him because Amber said he left right after his phone started ringing. He has a set ringtone for me. So he knew it was me calling in an instant. Jake called later that evening, but before he could start yelling at me, I demanded to know what the hell he was doing trying to break into my house while I wasn't home earlier. He scared his sister and she nearly called police. Jake dodged the question by being angry about me changing the locks because I don't trust him. I said, damn right I don't trust him. Not after what he did. Jake fired back that I couldn't just be happy for him. And that if his mom was still alive, she'd have wanted him to use the ring to propose. I saw Red and said that if she wanted that, she'd have willed it to him. So he began whining and saying it was all my fault. He explained exactly what Sarah said when she broke up with him, and how she called me a miser, among other things. Then ranted about how I always thought Sarah was never good enough for him. But I pointed out he was putting words in my mouth. I never said she wasn't good enough for him. I barely knew Sarah. And I never once got in the way of him being with her till he stole the ring. He tried to deny that. But I asked him when I'd ever said anything bad about Sarah prior to the ring incident. He really sounded like he was thinking hard. But even he couldn't remember any actual time because I barely saw this woman ever while they were dating. I wasn't even aware they were dating till at least three months had gone by in their relationship. 
But that was all beside the point. What the hell was he trying to get into my house for this time? He refused to answer. So I answered for him. I said if he was after the ring, or any of the other family jewels. They've been moved to a secure safe location only I have access to. And if he was trying to break into my safe for my emergency cash fund, there's no way he'd get it open. Or if he was there to do any sort of harm to his sister, I'd kick his ass myself. I may have hit the nail in the head with at least one of those things, because Jake just had a long silent pause on the line. Then he told me he's made up his mind to put in for a transfer at his job and sell his condo. He wants to move as far away as possible and never speak to me again. His last words to me were to have a nice life with my favorite child. I don't understand how my son has so completely changed on this level in just a year. I never actually called Sarah a manipulative gold digger until recently. I said she had my son wrapped around her finger and she loves jewelry. Though I guess that's not all that different in the long run. But in truth she is a manipulative gold digger. Especially after the drama act she put on to try and keep a ring that was never hers. I mean she spent days in bed crying over a ring she knew was stolen. And then had her huge tantrum at not being able to get it back or copy it. And now because of her, my son has chosen to wash his hands of me and his sister altogether. I am devastated. But at the same time furious that my son would do such things just to appease this which of a woman he'd only been dating eight months. That's not enough time dating before proposing. I dated my wife for over two years before popping the question. I shudder to think what things would have been like if that which had married my son. I know Jake is going to blame me for a long time. And I'm not sure if we'll ever speak again. I hope one day we can reconcile. But for now I think we need time apart. Amber is also very upset. She's extremely thankful I got the ring back for her. But she's just as shocked as I was that Jake has become like he is now. And she's referring to him as a brute for how he shoved her aside when he stole the ring, and also calling him a simp. Whatever that means. Thankfully she has a great support system with me and the rest of the family. Something I know Jake doesn't have right now. Multiple family members have called or messaged him to tell him off. And his now former best friend even came to me to apologize. He and Jake got in a nasty fight over what he'd done. And when his own best friend since elementary school didn't see things from his side, Jake cut him off too. Jake's ex-girlfriend Sarah also got in trouble with her own family. Her parents contacted me to ask for my side of the story and then apologized for their daughter's behavior. They only knew a small bit of what happened. But were appalled to hear about the way she'd acted. Like Jake, they said she used to be a much kinder person. But in the past few years she's changed so much. They are severely disappointed in her. They were also covering half of the rent to her current apartment and are now telling her that when her lease is over, they will not be renewing it with her. She can either pay the full rent herself, or look for somewhere else to live. And now she's going around cursing my name and saying this is all my fault, what is it with people these days? It's like ever since all those memes about entitled people on the internet have exploded, it just made more people like them. When I was Jake's age, I only saw people like that on rare occasions. Now they're everywhere. I've seen two in the local supermarket this year even. And they're spreading their toxicity like a flood on the world. I can only hope one day my son comes to his senses and finds happiness again. Whether or not he chooses to speak with me ever again. I'll hold out hope he'll one day return to being the kind person he once was. Update, I'll start this off by asking that people please stop messaging me for pictures of the ring. I've gotten many asking me to see it for various reasons. Some even because they want a similar ring made as well. Well I made my daughter aware of this Reddit account, and she's proud of me for doing it. But she doesn't want pictures of the ring online. And that's her decision to make because the ring is hers. 
I don't need to question her as to why. I just need to respect her decision. I also don't like the idea of posting pictures of it because if it gets copied by total strangers, then it'd no longer be unique. I was willing to let my son copy the ring because it was a family matter. But I won't be posting it for everyone to see and replicate as they please. I've already long deleted the pictures of the ring I sent Jake. And the ring is locked away in a bank vault right now. It will not remain there permanently as I intend to get a better home safe to keep it in when I can afford IT. In the past few weeks since my original post, I did have cameras installed. And I'm thankful I did. For those wondering if my son and Sarah would get back together, no they did not. My son is apparently really selling his condo. And he's not spoken to me since our last phone conversation where he told me to have a nice life with my favorite child after not getting his way. I have been to see my lawyer about my estate and got my will altered. I haven't written my son out. But he's lost a lot of the things he would have otherwise inherited for the time being. After having some time to think, I've realized I just can't feel remorse for Jake anymore after his actions as of late. My daughter Amber calling him a simp seems to be an apt description, once I found out what that meant. But I just don't want to be angry or sad about it anymore. Neither emotion is doing me any good. So for now I'm just going to do my best to let it go and move on. Jake seems to plan on moving on without us anyway. Hopefully in time he'll understand what he did wrong. But I can't change his mind for him. I did run into my son's ex Sarah at a random place in town. She spotted me while I was with one of my friends in the middle of the local shopping mall. She called out to me while we were in front of a bunch of people and started booing me and calling me a greedy miser. I didn't really have to say anything to her because my friend laughed at her and called her a thief and a gold-digging bitch who just wanted my dead wife's ring because she couldn't have it. I saw half the crowd turn to look at her at once when he said that. Sarah flipped us off and stormed away while cursing my name and knocking over anything in her path. This included a small child, whom started crying in an instant. When she realized she'd hurt the kid, Sarah took off running. My friend and I helped the very pregnant mother of the child in calming the kid down, and thankfully the kid was okay. Sarah showed up at my house later to yell that it's all my fault her friends are all saying she's a gold digger now, and won't hang out with her anymore. I said she is a gold digger because of what she did. She never had a right to my wife's ring, and she cried for days about it like a child, then broke up with my son just because he couldn't afford what she wanted. That's all something a gold digger would do. I'm not at fault just because she wanted my dead wife's ring so bad. And I'll make damn sure she never sees it again. What came next was more unintelligible screaming from her as she stomped back to her car. I'd hoped that was the end of it. But that girl just wouldn't leave well enough alone. For those thinking Sarah and Jake's personality shifts were due to drugs, I'm not sure whether or not to tell you I'm sorry that isn't the case. It was all them. Which in Jake's case is a harder pill to swallow because it means he has no excuse for such a radical shift in behavior. Sarah was arrested last week for attempting to break into my house. The cameras I had installed caught her sneaking into my backyard and trying to break in. She tried to break open my back door with an axe and that tripped the alarm I had installed. She ran off, but the cameras in front of the house caught video of both her and her car very clearly in my driveway. She also left the axe with her fingerprints on it on the ground before she ran. When police got there, she was long gone. But they later found her at her apartment. They initially just wanted to arrest her for breaking my door and trespassing, but she went crazy on them and wound up getting pinned to the ground and frog marched out. This woman definitely has something mentally wrong with her. A few days after Sarah was arrested, I spoke to her parents again. They offered to pay for the broken door and then filled me in on some of the details. And it seems drugs were not involved. 
They told me she was given drug tests at the station and her system came back clean. And since she wasn't on drugs, I don't think Jake was either. But Sarah was found to be very mentally unwell. So I guess it was just her crazy that was contagious. Her parents promised me that I'll never have to deal with her again as they plan to move her out of town once they've dealt with the legalities of her situation. And they haven't contacted me again since. But I wouldn't say it's my business that they do either. I'm guessing though that Sarah likely needs major mental health treatment. So in a sense I do feel a little sorry for her now. I knew Jake had to be aware of what happened with Sarah since everyone was talking about it. But he has not reached out to any friends or family. One of the people he works with has contacted me though, and told me Jake is still openly very angry about what happened. He still believes the ring would have been a small price to pay for his happiness. But now that Sarah has been taken away, Jake has also shifted blame onto her. And saying she's the crazy gold digging woman who ruined his life. It seems all he can do is blame, blame, and blame other people some more. Until he accepts fault in his own actions, then I don't think we can have a relationship. He's not going to do well in life if he can't take responsibility for his own actions. I just hope that some time alone wherever he chooses to go will help him to mellow out and understand where he went wrong, this is likely to be my last update here, unless something else goes wrong. And if no new posts show up in the coming months or years, then you'll all know everything is fine. At least as much as it can be, considering the situation. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, there are a lot of interesting stories ahead of you.